This is the Honda CBR XX, or more commonly known as the Blackbird. And it's one of the greatest motorcycles to ever walk the earth. It's so great that many people would consider this one of the first hyperbikes. And this one is mine. It's all mine. Don't touch it. I said don't touch it. <laughs> Named after the Lockheed Martin SR71, the story of the Blackbird starts years before the Blackbird ever had a chance to set eyes on any of its victims. When Kawasaki released the world's fastest motorcycle at the time, the ZX-10. Beating the previous record held by the Honda CBR-1000F by just one mile an hour. The ZX-10 had a top speed of a whopping 165. Then a year later, Yamaha came out with the FCR-1000, which beat the ZX-10 by just two miles an hour. Then in 1990, Kawasaki came out with a bike that would hold the title of world's fastest motorcycle for the next six years, the Kawasaki ZX-11, which had a top speed of 176 miles per hour. But six years later, in that awful year that we called 1996, when the Beanie Babies came out, just when it seemed like nothing good could happen that year, God released his grace upon the earth and once again blessed humanity with the Honda Blackbird. Until this day, the Honda Blackbird is still the fastest motorcycle in the galaxy with a top speed of 176.5. We round that up to 177, round that up to 180, still crushes everything. That is not true. Two or three years later, the Hayabusa came out and just destroyed everything um, for the next couple of decades. And now I know what all you young 600cc super sport guys are out there saying. That bike is old, my bike is new, I can smoke it. No, you're not. Your bike is not this fast. Just because this bike is over 25 years old is, and is considered a classic does not mean it's slow. To this day, you will still find Blackbirds out there on the street, on the track, just slaying 600s, 750s, and 1000s, especially with the right rider on it. The Blackbird's inline fuel injected four cylinder lays down 162 horsepower to the wheel. And I mean, that back in the day, that was huge. 20 more horsepower than anything else out there. And it sends its power from the engine through a six speed close ratio gearbox, and all that gets connected to the pavement through a 180, 55, 17 inch tire. And claims a zero to 60 time of 2.77 seconds. It's as fast as a McLaren 720. You might notice that compared to modern 1000s, this bike is a little heavy. It tips the scale at 560 pounds, where a new CBR is gonna be almost 100 pounds lighter. But as you can tell, this is a bigger motorcycle than a CBR 1000. I mean, I've got much more, I got much more room on here. So a better comparison than this versus the leader bike would be the Hayabusa. And this compared to the brand new, the third gen Hayabusa, this is 22 pounds lighter. The Blackbird's also significantly more comfortable than the average sport bike because of the way they got the, the pegs, but also the clip-ons are above the triple tree, like also similar to the Hayabusa. I mean, this really set the stage of a big, fast, touring hyper bike. And honestly, you could ride this thing for days. Another thing I like about this bike is it's the perfect combination of the least amount of attack with reliable analog and mechanical components. The Blackbird is very well known for being incredibly reliable. And the next thing you'll realize about this bike is right here. You don't see this on many bikes, linked braking system. Now what that is, is it connects the rear brake to the front brake. So if you're doing slow maneuvering, it's not gonna do anything, it's gonna bypass it, and it's not, it's not gonna do anything. But if you're going really, really fast, and you get on the brake really, really hard, instead of locking you up, it puts a little bit of pressure to the front. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't really know. Uh, it is a cool concept, it was kinda like their the way they were trying to bypass or not do ABS at the time. ABS was not very popular in the mid 90s. Um, a lot of guys end up taking that system off and they don't really use it that much. Although it is, a, it is an interesting concept with a little bit more technology. Uh, I imagine you were gonna see that more in bikes. Well, k and Spiders, they all have linked braking systems. Now over the decade that the Blackbird was out, they came out in seven different colors. The rarest and coolest, in my opinion, is the white one, I've never seen one, the red one, I've owned a couple, and the blue one. This is the gray one, and obviously the, the, the black one is the most common. So enough talking about this thing, let's take it for a spin. I wanna fill you guys in on why I bought this bike, and maybe a few reasons why the Blackbird might be your next bike too. Before we jump on the bike and do this ride, let's do the words of wisdom real quick. Mark 13, 33, take heed, keep on alert, for you do not know when the appointed time will come. And that's talking about the uh, the returning, the second returning of Christ. I decided to take this bike for a spin. Let's put on my gloves. 
Now this bike, this particular bike, has 31,000 miles on it. Nothing for one of these bikes. They also put heated grips on it. I'm not a big fan. I mean, they're handy when it's cold outside, but I don't like the way they feel. I do, however, love the fact that this bike just works. It always, it always works. Check this out. <laughs> barely, barely even getting into it. Now this is a, it's just, this bike is on the larger side of the, uh, of the four cylinder high revving sport bike engine. This thing revs up to almost 11,000 RPMs, which is uh, pretty nuts. So it's got good power. It's got good power at the lower RPMs. Mid range is nice, but I, it doesn't really kick in until the higher end. So let's, uh, let's go find the higher end of our RPMs. So I'm, I'm, I'm 6'2", and I, the reason why I love this bike so much, it is, it's so comfortable. Uh, I'm not down here. It's not breaking my back. They're reliable. It's fast. Is there, are there faster bikes out there? Um, there are now. And when, when we talk about the fastest, what that means, it's, it's talking about one metric. One metric only. And they're just talking about uh, top speed. Not really accelerating. Although when this did came out, this had, this had significantly more horsepower than the other bikes did. It's an extremely linear power curve. I mean, it's not. It's not like a six. It's not like a six hundred. Where you ride a 600 and it's like nothing, 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 8,000 RPM, something, and then 10,000 RPM, and it's like, whoa, you're like, you're about to fall off. This just consistently pulls very hard throughout the entire power curve. So if you want to pass someone at 4,000 RPMs, you're, if you're at 4,000 RPMs and you want to pass someone, you could drop a gear if you want to, but you could just roll into it. In my opinion, um, I think it's a good looking bike, but the two things that really dated is that goofy looking front headlight. You know, nowadays headlights are very complicated, tons of jagged edges all over it. It's got to look like some type of ant or some type of transformer, which I think is kind of cool. But so the headlight kind of dates it a little bit, but also the, uh, the single tail. You know, if you can get a split tail with it, it's going to look a little more modern. Uh, they start, start looking at older 80s, 80s uh, super super sport bikes. And you're gonna notice that the tail is like, oh, they they actually expected you to put your girl on your back, on the back. Which, uh, come on, we all know that's just not it's happening. But it's not. It's probably not the best idea. It's not. What I mean is, it's not meant for it. Is is what I mean. Nothing about a motorcycle. Nothing about a motorcycle is meant for someone to be on the back, or nothing about a sport bike is meant for someone to be on the back. A lot. There's a lot of misconceptions about these big bikes. I'm going to put this big bike in the same category as the ZX14 and the Hayabusa because they they have much more presence they're bigger they're larger they weigh more they feel bigger a lot of times larger guys feel more comfortable buying bikes like this than, than a smaller bike is the misconception is that they don't handle very well they're not made for that so they're made for drag racing and that, that, that's just not true these bikes handle extremely well they, they're still sport bike and they they do everything the other bikes can do, but they're a little more comfortable, a lot more comfortable. I said this is a good spot to do a zero to 60. Go. I did, uh, I, did I did continue accelerating after that, but um, this is a close course road. The speed limit's 60 on this road, that's pretty quick. 
it could have been faster. So the story behind this particular motorcycle, I was not, um, I've owned a bunch of Blackbirds and really liked them, always wanted to have one that I, that I could keep. And a guy came in, he was looking to sell it. It was at the time and I was looking to get rid of all the bikes I had. I was selling a bunch of bikes at the time. And he comes in and he's like, hey, I want to sell this bike. And man, I just wasn't, I wasn't that interested in it. Um, Cause I, I was trying to get, I was trying to like slim out my inventory. And he's like, make me an offer. And I was like, well, I mean, I, I don't want to insult you. And he's like, I won't be insulted. Just make me an offer. And I tell him 1,300 bucks. And he's like, yeah, let's do it. So I got it for 1,300 bucks. And the story behind that, behind that bike, the story behind him was that he had two of them. He found this one, had a bunch of cool parts on it that he really liked. And he took all the parts off and put stock parts on it. And he, did, he didn't need to. He, didn't, he, didn't, he needed more space in his garage. So he probably made money off the deal for all the cheap parts he got. And that's, uh, that's the story of this bike and that's why I love it. This bike is this bike is always comfortable. You're going 15, yeah, it feels good going 15. You're doing 115, yeah, it feels good doing 115. You're doing 155. It just it always feels good and solid. Now let's get to that thing that I said said earlier. I'm kind of annoyed about Honda though. They only made one generation of Honda Blackbird. They gave it one go and they're like, yeah, we're good not going to keep on doing this at about the same time when they dropped out zx14 jumped in started making a very popular bike people like the zx14 and then hayabusa obviously zx14 only had one as far as i know only one generation hayabusa came out in 99 and another one in 2008 and then the third one i think 22 or 21. um how cool would it have been Honda would have been so far ahead of the game if they would have kept on making Blackbirds, Blackbird Gen 2, Blackbird Gen 3. I mean, the CBR 1000 is an amazing motorcycle. So why can't you just keep on making a big, giant, touring, awesome bike? That's my only question. Well, I guess they kind of did. The Goldwing's a pretty awesome bike. If you, if you don't believe me, go look at my review of the Goldwing. I'll see you guys next time. Remember, it's not what you're riding, but where are you going? Thank mm -hmm. you.